So there is another paper that I want to cover and we have around 10 minutes to do so. And that's DGCNN. It's also really powerful for working with point clouds and 3D data. So you're going to see edge conf, that's just edge convolution. And these are the applications, indoor navigation, self-driving vehicles, robotics, shapes, synthesis, modeling, etc. The data could be in the form of LiDAR scanner, some data sets that you can actually do exploratory data analysis on them. So we saw a lot of other data sets other than ImageNet in this course. Then there is edge convolution. Let's see what that is. We have a point cloud. And let's say each one of these points in your point cloud are f-dimensional. This could be x, y, z coordinates, or they could be color, surface normal, etc. We are going to create on the fly some dynamic graphs. And each graph, you're going to denote it by its vertices and its edges. The vertices are going to be your points. So these are, that's easy. These are your points. The edges are going to be connections between the points. And how do you come up with that? You do k nearest neighbor. So once you do your k nearest neighbor, it's going to give you your edges. And in addition to k nearest neighbor, there is also a self loop. So each point is connected to itself. And we are going to look at some edge features. So you're going to have two points, xi and xj, in your data set, in your point cloud. It's not a data set. It's just one element of your data set. So xi and xj are going to be two points in your point cloud. And then we need some edge features. It's going to be eij because you have two points, i and j. It's going to be parameterized. It's going to give you some edge features. The question is, what is h? That's one question. The other question is, how are you going to aggregate these features, these edge features that you're obtaining? And you have multiple options for this. You can have the summation or maximum for this operation. And let's see what we are doing. We want to know the value of our output at index i. We are going to take as input our xi. It's a point in our point cloud. And then we know its neighborhood because of our edges. So this point is going to be connected to, to some other points. And because we already constructed uh, our edges, we can do a summation or a maximum around that point. So it's very similar to convolution. Okay? It's local. You can have various choices for h and this is square notation, which is summation, maximum, or other options. If you want to have a standard convolution, you would have m filters. xj is a vector. Theta m is a vector of the same size. Once you multiply them together, it's the dot product. Now you are doing a summation over neighborhood points around your index i, around your point i. And that's going to give you your features for the next layer. This is a standard convolution. For point net, the previous paper, our h of xi and xj was just a function of xi. And then in the end, you had a global average pooling over your points or global max pooling. For point CNN, it's a function of its neighbors, xj. And then uh, you're going to have a Gaussian kernel. And a Gaussian kernel, we know that if you are very far from zero, the kernel is going to go to zero. If you're around zero, it's going to be a value of one. And then you have a pairwise distance between your points. The further these two points are from each other, then they're going to have less effect on each other. And that's going to give you a method called point CNN. You can have another option. You look at your XJs in the coordinate of your XIs, and these are local information. It's also not only you want to include local information, when you deal with point clouds, you want to encode global information as well. So it's better for your function h of theta to be not only a function of the local coordinate, but also a function of the global coordinate of the current point that you're dealing with. And in the end, the DGCNN paper, DGCNN method, is going to include, it's going to choose its h according to this function. You first multiply your xi by a vector then you can have m of them. It's similar to your convolution. And then it's not only a function of xi, the global information, but also a function of the local information, the distance of xj from xi. And that's going to give you your edge features. And then in the end, you're just going to use max. So you're going to do a maximum pooling of the neighbors of the i, the i point. And then why is it dynamic? Because you're going to create your graph 
on the fly in a dynamic fashion. So you're gonna dynamically construct for each layer your k nearest neighbor. And that's why this is the bottleneck of this method. It's gonna be slow because of the k nearest neighbor operation. And let's go over the data sets. Model net has this many meshes of cat geometries, and it's gonna have 40 categories. So you have 40 classes. Shape net is a part segmentation data set. It has this many shapes. You're gonna have 16 object categories in total, and you're gonna have 50 parts for your annotation. Stanford large scale 3D indoor space data set, S3DIS. It has 3D scan point clouds of six indoor areas. There are gonna be 272 rooms in total. And the semantic categories, there are 13 of them. And they're like board, book, bookcase, chair, ceiling, beam, and then plus clutter, object stuff. This is point net. It's having some confusion between classes. This is DGCNN, and that's your ground truth. So it's a powerful method. The only bottleneck is dynamically constructing k nearest neighbor. And in terms of implementation, the way that you implement that is, let's say there are k neighbors for each point i. First, you create these edge cons, edge con features, and that's going to have a dimension of your points. Then you have k neighbors. And then uh, each one is gonna have a N for its features because you're gonna take those points and push them through a bunch of MLP. That's how you're gonna implement that. So these are just MLP. And then once this is done, the neighbors are computed. You do a pooling on the K dimension and the dimension corresponding to your, to your neighbor. So it's very easy to implement this. Once you know your edges computed using K nearest neighbor, it's very easy to do the pooling and implement that. I guess I'm finishing right on time. I'll be around if you have any questions.